sorry, 38. Exodus 29, 38. It says this of the brazen altar. Now this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar. Two lambs of the first year day by day continually. All right. This is, this is, this is what you offer. This is what thou shalt offer. This is, this is your offering. Not money you put in a plate or special time doing ministry things, within those, you, it, can, it can still be the lamb being offered. But this is continual. It is day by day fulfilled. Uh, and any of you who know any of the books I've ever written or whatever, I think I wrote one. I think the title was Christ or the... the Jesus was the fulfillment and the fulfiller. And we know him as the fulfiller, and a lot of times we don't know him as the fulfillment. That we look to him 2,000 years ago and we say he fulfilled the old covenant things. Of course, Jesus came along and said, you know, I didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it, you know. And uh, the law is fulfilled in us who walk not after our flesh, which is supposed to be crucified, flesh, but after the order of the fulfillment, um, whereby Christ was not just the fulfiller a long time ago, he is yet the fulfillment of that within his body. He remains the same. And so, uh, this thou shalt offer two lambs of the first year, day by day, continually. The one lamb thou shalt offer in the morning, and the other lamb thou shalt offer at evening. And we know that in God's economy, there's really only one lamb. I mean, in the truth of the truth, when 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 the, that judgment seat that that talks about what nation we are of. Goat, goats or, or sheep, if we are of his nation, then we are sheep, and yet it's his life within us. I mean, it's, that's what he recognizes, not with eyes, but is akin to. Uh, that's, what, that's what he knows that the Father is. That's what he knows what the Holy Spirit is. That's, that's a recognition of being. Um, and of kindred spirit, of, of like nation, if you will. Um, so uh, I wrote down, give me the lamb in the coming of light and when darkness comes also. The morning and the evening sacrifice, not when just a new fresh day is beginning and you feel good and you're ready to, you know, give him... Um, Yeah, your best, yeah. Sadly, that's, that's where I immediately thought. Uh, and then when the darkness comes, the night comes, and the things are rough, you know, to respond with something else. Um, continually, day by day, morning and evening, this reality of Christ. It's, um, you know, I was thinking about it today, and I, I think I could really run on this, but... You know, Jesus didn't spend a lot of time talking to the disciples, or the New Testament doesn't spend a lot of time of establishing a new religion. Doesn't spend a lot of time on Bible reading or going to church or, or you know, singing or, I mean, it really doesn't. It, it doesn't, all the things that, that we hold as why he came are not prominent at all. I mean, not even at all. They're just sort of smattered through there, and then we pull the scripture out and say, well, they sang a hymn at the Last Supper, and so, you know, so let's sing a hymn, let's sing hymns. Um, well, no, let's be hymns. 
you know, let it be him. And that's the, that's the emphasis of the epistles. That's the emphasis of the New Testament. And it is certainly the emphasis of the new covenant. I will put my spirit in you. I will put my, you know, I will take away the stony heart, you know. And I think the church is full of people with stony hearts, you know, that are, that are not, you know, I, I get in trouble. But, you know, the good news is I'm just a guy that you can yell at now. Um, you know, uh, is the church, I think, is full of people with stony hearts because they are not of that nation. You know, because that, that, that judgment says it's the judgment of nations, and yet they're just sheep and goats. You know, what is that, Matthew 24, 25, I think. Um, so that's why I'm emphasizing of the same kind, of the same nation, of the same creed and all of that, but it is more importantly, see, he doesn't picture them as Catholics wearing, you know, priest outfits or, or, or Protestants in any way or anything like that. It's down to one thing. You're either a sheep or you're a goat. And that, you know, I don't know why I always look on the left because I think the sheep are on the right. But I always do. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm in trouble. Anyway. Um, but, um, you know, I'm, I, am, I am convinced to my very being of these things that I talk about of his life, which means you don't have to be convinced like me. Although I did get a text today from somebody who s simply said, thank you for loving the lamb. And I went, I really do. And then next sentence was, thanks for noticing. <laughs> Because I do love the lamb, and I believe in the lamb. I mean, um, you know, my, my, my brain runs. So, you know, I was thinking about that, and I was thinking of that, and then I thought, for whatever reason, I thought about the Antichrist. And I went, you know what? The anti this is just all rolling, and I believe it's the Holy Spirit. The Antichrist is not anti-God. He's not. He's not. I will be like the Most High God. But his description of God is that he sees him in his power and his ability to rule and his ability over everyone. You read it, Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14, and I just feel like I'm running and I got, I'm halfway through, you know, and, and those scriptures. And it is, I will do, I will sit in the sides of the north. I will, you know, all of this and this, this spirit. And um, that's what he, he thought God was like. He never really knew God in that, in his, in his being. Okay. So Jesus, when he came, so as far as the devil's concerned, you know, I want to be like God. But I want to be God and have those powers. Jesus came as the Messiah, and it, he wasn't the Messiah as he walked and healed and all that stuff. That was, that was Jesus of Nazareth. The Messiah came and died on a cross and fulfilled all the scriptures that were promised. It was the cross. It was Christ crucified. He is anti lay down your life and die. He's anti that. You know, he's anti let, you know, if somebody spit on your spit in your face, turn the other cheek, or, you know, I mean See, we go, well, no, that only applies to slapping. No. See, because we've got it all figured in a little box, and we don't really know him. And, the, and I thought, you know what? Um, you, you not only know, when you know the lamb, you also know Antichrist. You can spot that spirit a mile away always declares itself because God won't declare himself within himself only the other remember when the spirit of truth comes he will not declare himself he will declare me 
Jesus comes and declares the Father. And there's on and on and on. There's, you know, I mean, oh my God. <laughs> it's a full reality there. But um, that we always think, Lord, give me discernment so that I don't get tripped up by the Antichrist. And these are only my thoughts that I'm telling you over this little part right here. My thought was, we're already tripped up. We are. We are already um, assumed certain things. Or for example, let's just take it to the extreme, but this is not, this is not the only thing that counts. There was a big, big, big church um, in Dallas, right on the edge as you came to Denton, big old church, talked about success and money and people flocked to that. And, you know, Paul said, you know, work with your hands that you might give that others may have. I'm, using, I'm talking about a spirit here, the, the contrast of a spirit. That, you know, I think some of us could look at that and go, well, that's wrong. <laughs> you know. Um, but when it comes to the Antichrist, we're going, give me discernment, Lord, so I don't get deceived. I don't think he has to use a whole lot of, you know, voodoo powers to deceive us. I think, I think there are certain things written in the, you know, what it was it talked about in Thessalonians, you know, that he will sit in the temple showing himself to be God. All of these things that are, that are evident when we read the scriptures, but not evident, not evident in our basic perception and again my mind was running and I said okay why why is this not evident in our basic perception and I, I could only come to one conclusion we really don't know the lamb we really don't know we don't know the lamb we don't know the messiah we don't know of what spirit we are. We don't know. I mean, we can go on and on. You know what I mean? We don't know um, what we allow, whether it be within or without. What we admire, whether it be within or without. What we follow, whether it be within or without. What we would consider glorious or worthy of respect. But when you see the Lamb by the power of the Holy Spirit, who is another person who is determined not to be seen because he's invisible and determined not to declare himself the purity of that, that seeing. Shatters. I mean, the scales come off your eyes, you know. Paul, the scales come off your eyes and you, you know, they call the prophets seers. Well, we, we see, we see, and we can speak for God and we can, um, because we're not, we're not speaking of ourselves. You see, there's a, I would say there'd be a difference between a seer who spoke and just a preacher. I mean, we all want to be seers, amen? <laughs> we don't want to just talk. We don't want to just share. We don't want to just say stuff. And then our being be in contrast to that because, you know, the, the, however much we believe in that picture in uh, Matthew 25, that's going to be the determining factor. That's going to be it. Are you of me? Are you of my kind? And... And let's face it, almost no Christian will say, well, I'm not of his kind. All right, so who are you talking to when you say stuff like this? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who I'm talking to. But I know 
that there is a seeing that the Holy Spirit can give because of the purity of his heart and because of the clarity of his relationship with Jesus, that it has nothing to do with purity of message. Not first. Can you, can you see what I'm saying there? That it, would, it, it couldn't have that first. That's a wrong premise to have that first. Then that, that means we have purity of message and therefore we're something and therefore we're honorable or worth something or, you know. And uh, there's, there's mixture. There's, there's junk that we're adding in of ourselves. We're using it even while we're trying to glorify the Lord. So it's a mixture. I mean, you know, I think we all can admit that, you know. Um, but to, to allow the Holy Spirit, okay, so I was thinking about this, and I'm almost out of time here. Uh, I was thinking about the, two minutes. Okay, I was thinking about the altar of incense, and I was thinking that when you look at that, if you were either reading in the Bible or you were there at the time, you'd look at that, and you would see it for what you could see. Same with the altar of incense. I mean, the, the, the brazen altar. And you might see with the brazen altar, thank God that, you know, he, he loved us so much that he came up with an idea of just killing animals so that we wouldn't have to suffer in hell. Basic salvation message. <laughs> Except for it wasn't animals, it was a lamb. Oh, thank God. But there's so much more there, see? And so Jesus comes along, and he is the altar of incense, but we, don't, we only see what we can see, which is not very much of the altar of incense, because we think he just put that away and wasn't it. So we see surface, and then we get to reading the epistles and how that speaks of us or rather Christ in us and the Christ who we are in, not who we are in Christ, but the Christ who we are in, emphasis on being on him. And we see either something surface there, because all of those are just surface things unless the spirit of God just brings you in, brings you in. And the seeing doesn't make you more wise. It doesn't make you more famous. It makes you decrease in a real way. Not, you know, because, okay, so there's a teaching. I know I got one minute. Well, there's this teaching. Uh, he, must, he must increase and I must decrease. So we all grab that. And we find ways and areas to decrease in, but we're not regularly being burned up so that Christ can come forth as sweet incense. That's not, we don't think of that as a continual day by day, perpetual, we don't think of it like that. We, we don't even think of it like that. I mean, that's, that's part of my point is that we see the surface, we get what we get, but we don't go, you know, I, I'm not just blind in this area of altar of incense. I'm a blind man, and you're my eyes, and if I don't see, I, I mean, I won't see unless you see, but I believe deep down that I see a lot. I just don't see certain areas. And because I see a lot, I'm special. I'm deep. I'm, well, you know, I mean, it's natural. I think we've all done it. I've done it. Um, but then you start looking at the altar of incense and you go, okay, well, the, 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 the solid form burns up and totally disappears, us, and something sweet comes forth because we're in union with him in that relationship. We're part of the fulfillment, but it's really him fulfilling in us and through us and us in him. And, he in us, and you know, in him I move 
live and move and have my being, and this is what it's talking about. It is in the realm of what God understands that he wanted, and Christ is the fulfillment of, not a religious organization or religious a religion called Christianity that's been formed and reformed and <laughs> restored and <laughs> all the things that, are, you know, we put the titles on until it is what it is today, which, see, I'm not against that person. I'm not against churches and I just want Jesus. Really, that's it. I'm not, I'm not anti-devil or anti-Adam, uh, I just want Jesus, and I want him here first. And so that's what I'm working on. I mean, that's what I'm working on. It really is. And truthfully, the only reason why I'm talking on Thursdays when we have him is because he tells me to. And that's why Scott has to call and say, are you going to be sharing? I have, sometimes I have to go, no, I'm not, because it's not my, you know, well, you have a class, and it should keep going. No, it's not a class. You understand, it's not, a, it's not any of that. It's either Jesus or it's not going to be Jesus. Amen. Father, bless our hearts with the Spirit of God opening, opening our eyes, but, but more than our eyes, our hearts, to long after you. Longing goes on more than just a few moments. To long after you. To, to get on our knees at times. Literally on our knees. And just say, Lord, I can't live without you. I need you. I want you. I want you. And you, you are my pursuit. And you are the, the love of my heart. And you are what I cannot live without. So, Holy Spirit, help me see Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.